Do androids dream of electric sheep? What do they remember and what happens with their memories? But no, After Yang is not another adaptation of Philip K. Dick's short story that was the basis for Blade Runner, but is asking pretty much the question that the title of that story was raising. If you want to hear more about that, then stay with me for this review video. In a not so distant future, Kira and Jake have adopted a daughter named Mika, who is of Chinese heritage. As they are not, they are taking advantage of a new technology, because a company named Brothers and Sisters has created artificial humans, so called techno sapiens, artificial intelligences that are equipped with technology as much as organic parts, and whose main purpose it is to function as a sibling for only children. Especially when it comes to adopting a kid from a different culture, then the purpose of those second siblings is also to connect the kids with their heritage, to make sure they are learning enough about their cultural background. Yang is such a techno sapien and is loved by the whole family, especially by his little sister Mika. As they wake up one day, Yang is just not starting up, so Jake needs to have him repaired. Unfortunately, as those techno sapiens are quite expensive, Jake has bought one that was not brand new but refurbished, apparently only in use for 5 days before. However, due to this fact, he does not have a warranty from the original company, but only from a reseller who does not exist anymore. Taking Yang to a certified repair shop also doesn't solve the problem, because they can only fix 12 different things. And apparently the core, the thing that is affected with Yang, is not one of these 12 parts. Now his only options are to either have him recycled and get some parts salvaged to get a few bucks off on the next model, or to have someone look into Yang who is not certified, something that the company Brothers and Sisters has made illegal to protect their intellectual property. As it is his only chance to save Yang, Jake is giving it a shot and has someone else looking into repairing the sibling. But that mechanic also is not able to repair Yang, but he is retrieving a recording device that he thinks might be spyware that once the models get recycled, is just used to learn a lot about the family and basically just illegal data collection. However, being pointed at someone who knows more about that, someone who works in a museum dedicated to Techno Sapien, tells him that this most likely is a memory bank because it is rumored that Techno Sapiens are able to record up to 10 seconds per day and store as their memory. And she always wanted to know what Techno Sapiens are interested in saving. What is the stuff that they think is worth remembering? Asking Jake to donate Yang to the museum and allowing them to display him along with the memory bank for everyone to experience what a Techno Sapien is all about, Jake decides to first review the memories himself to make sure his family is protected. But what he finds out when reviewing the memories is surprising him and might also surprise you. Let's stop the synopsis here to give not too much away, though this is not actually a movie where you can give that much away. It is more about the journey and the imagery you will see along the way and not really about some kind of a twist in the end or something like that. If you are looking for a movie like that, then you are wrong here. This is more a visual experience and one that is told in a quiet way without rushing things. Now you could start to look for some obvious weaknesses in the screenplay, like the fact that it seems to be unlikely that there is a museum about Techno Sapiens, but nobody has ever opened one and looked at the memory core before. Because you also see a lot of Techno Sapiens there being displayed in a way like they are displayed in Body Worlds. The art exhibit, you know, where they made human bodies into art pieces. So likely they were donated by the mother company after the core was removed. But still, that nobody seems to have any knowledge of that seems to be a little bit far-fetched. And if nobody dared to oppose the company, then they would also not be allowed to display Yang's memories. Because that obviously would mean to admit to have illegally opened him. But like in the movie Next Exit, that was also shown at the Fantasy Film Fest this year and that I reviewed two weeks ago, the whole thing about the Techno Sapiens is not the main focus, but just a means to tell the main story. 
And that is just the question of what makes us human? And what moments do we consider to keep as memories stored in our brains? Because as it turns out, the memories that Yang is storing are not that different from the ones we would remember. Those are mainly key memories about the family. Memories we see in one scene are even matching the ones that Jake as the family father is keeping. The one thing that had me really wonder a bit is the fact that Jake pretty much knew that Yang cannot be brought back to life. And the only question was mainly to conserve his memories and if he allows them to be displayed in the museum. And I was asking myself, why doesn't he just tell that to his family? By dragging it out, he was just adding to the amount of time the family would need to come to terms with what happened and that they will not have Yang in their lives anymore. But there seems to be a clear reason for that, and that is that he just hasn't accepted it yet. He is not willing to let him go. Because first off, he kinda considered Yang as not just part of a family, but almost as his son. He even considered at one point to initiate him to everything he needs to know to carry on the family business. On the other hand, studying his memories also let Jake relive the past, realizing that he was relying way too much on Yang to raise his daughter. Jake comes to term with the fact that he basically was an absentee father, at least kinda, because every chance he got, he would just stay longer in his shop, even if it is not needed, knowing that Yang would take care of his little one. So he also had to use this time to just deal with his sadness and guilt. Fortunately, he soon invites his family to also take part in that journey by catching them up on everything and sharing those memories that he was studying. Yang once said that he would love that the end of his existence would also mean a new beginning. And in some way it does, because it offers a new way for Jake to re-engage with his family and to be the father and husband that his loved ones need. And he also is getting a little bit more open-minded along the way when it comes to clones and other human and human-like beings that usually would not fit into his worldview. And this may be considered a larger spoiler, so if you haven't seen the movie and don't want to get spoiled, please directly skip to the rating. Because, as we find out, Yang living with Jake and his family wasn't his first assignment. Hidden in the memories, Jake also discovered that Yang already lived a full life before he was refurbished and that the previous owner, who actually had him only for a few days, was the second one who bought Yang. Which makes Jake and his family the third owners. As we learn, his first owner was a single mother, whom he accompanied from the birth of her son until she eventually died at a very old age. He even seeked out the clone of that woman and befriended her living a life outside Jake's family that the family didn't even know about. So yes, apparently you don't actually have to be a human to show humanity, because being a human means to be looking at life with a sense of wonder, which is reflected in Yang's memories, as well as a certain degree of kindness, curiosity and the deep-rooted desire of finding connections, of building relationships, of belonging. And that is what this movie is all about. Now, before we go to the rating, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you are no subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. As you have just heard, this is not an action movie. This is not a classical science fiction movie. It's not even a classical drama. It's a melancholy journey into discovering what it means to be human. The movie mostly hits the right notes and it takes its time to tell a story. Even though with 95 minutes, it is not even overly long. It is a movie that you need allowed to happen in front of your eyes. And if you do so, then you will experience a great movie, which means I'm scoring this one with 8 out of 10 points. However, make sure that you are in the right mood to watch this movie, because otherwise you might get a little bit bored. Especially if you do not know beforehand what to expect. So expect calm and sentimental imagery full of wonder and do not expect to get any technical explanations for what the future might hold for us in regards of androids. What about you? What do you think makes a human human? Have you seen the movie as well and do you agree with my rating? Or do you disagree? Or haven't you seen the movie yet and are planning to watch it in the future? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching.